regular meeting number 29 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. to have Rabbi Yvonne Schwartz, uh, Assistant Director of Ohio State Hillel, uh, uh, with us this evening. Rabbi, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, everybody. I want to share on this Monday, which is the hardest day of the week, I want to share a prayer written by Rabbi Naomi Levy, a prayer for peace. Let us live in peace, God. Let children live in peace in homes free from brutality and abuse. Let them go to school in peace, freed from violence and fear. Let them pl pray, play in peace, God, in safe parks, in safe neighborhoods, watch over them. Let husbands and wives love in peace, in marriages free from cruelty. Let men and women go to work in peace, with no fears of terror or bloodshed. Let us travel in peace. Protect us, God, in the air, on the seas, along whatever road we take. Let nations dwell together in peace without the threat of war hovering over them. Help us, God, teach all people of all of all races and faiths in all the countries all over the world to believe that the peace that seems so far off is in fact within our reach. Let us all live in peace, God, and let us say amen. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This week's communications received by the City Clerk's Office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the City Bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not at this time. Are there resolutions by uh, members of Council, starting with President Pro Tem? Council Member Mitchell Brown. Uh, thank you, Council President. I do have one announcement this evening. Uh, this Thursday, June 6th, is the 75th anniversary of D-Day. To mark this anniversary, you may visit the National Veterans Memorial Museum to hear firsthand accounts from our very own D-Day veteran, Don Jakeway, whose story is highlighted in one of the museum exhibits along with fellow World War II veterans Jack Welsh and Carl Stout. The discussion will be led by Colonel Peter Mansour, U.S. Army retired, and General Raymond E. Mason, Jr., Chair of the Military History at The Ohio State University. This event is free but you must register at www.nationalvmm.org event backslash events backslash. That's all I have. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Dorrance. Thank you, Council President. I have two resolutions and one announcement this evening. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Thomas uh, Weeks to come forward to the podium as I introduce resolution 0170X-2019 uh, to recognize and celebrate the career of Thomas Weeks and his contributions to the city of Columbus. Um, I'm very honored to have Mr. Weeks here tonight as a longtime volunteer with Legal Aid myself at the Van Buren Center. I know the positive and meaningful impact the organization can have on lives of those who find themselves of need, need a legal representation without the resources to afford it. 
Uh, I'm reminded of a quote from U.S. Supreme Court Justice Hugo Black who once said, quote, there can be no equal justice where the kind of trial a man gets depends on the amount of money he has. To me, there are no better words to describe the importance services of legal aid provides. And tonight, we honor a man that, who led that charge throughout his career. Mr. Weeks has served as, served as the Executive Director of the Ohio State uh, Legal Services Association and the Legal Aid Society of Columbus. He's been involved in legal aid since his career began as a staff attorney at the Cleveland Legal Aid Society after receiving his law degree from the University of Michigan, but don't hold that against him. He managed a uh, neighborhood office for several years before serving as the Director of Civil Division and worked on a case that went all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Um, Thomas became the Executive Director of the Ohio State Legal Services Association in 1985 and was responsible for leading Southeastern Ohio Legal Services, which services 30 counties in Ohio, uh, Appalachia counties, through six different offices. Uh, the Ohio Poverty Law Center, a statewide advocacy organization, and the Legal Aid Society of Columbus. Throughout his career, uh, Thomas has represented and improved the lives of many, and for this council, thanks you. Uh, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for adoption. Second. Council Member, we have to take it from the table first. I'm sorry? Move to take it from the table. Move remove it from the table. Oh. I would like to make a motion to remove the resolution from tabling. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Moved. Uh, at this time, I'd move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Adopted. Thank you. Mr. Weeks, the floor oh, is yours. Thank you. Um, and um, it's been a, a wonderful career. Legal aid is a, a powerful force in our society. Every city has a legal aid society, and Columbus is lucky to have the Legal Aid Society of Columbus, which is a strong, um, vibrant, active organization. Um, my, the, the OSLSA board uh, has selected the, the former director of the Legal Aid Society of Columbus, Kate McGarvey, to take my place as the executive director of OSLSA. And um, Kate is a very good lawyer, a wonderful, strong advocate, member of the Women's Commission, a good manager, administrator. Many of you, or most of you know her. And I'm confident that she will do a wonderful job um, and will bring the entire organization, including the Legal Aid Society of Columbus, along. I want to recognize um, the support that Columbus Legal Aid gets from the bar in, uh, in Columbus. We have a wonderful uh, supportive legal community, the firms, the lawyers, the organized bar, particularly the Columbus Bar Association and Columbus Bar Foundation. Um, they provide pro bono assistance, uh, financial help, and political support. Um, legal aid, as we know it, would not exist if it weren't for private bar support back in the Reagan years. Um, and that support has been ongoing and has been invaluable to us. Um, in the area of pro bono, we had 500 attorney volunteers who helped us last year. They worked for 3,500 uh, pro bono clients, including 2,000 at brief uh, by advice clinics like the one where Council Rumble Doran's um, has volunteered um, steadfastly since 2014. Um, I also want to thank the city and this council for support over the years. Um, council Member Tyson is looking at me because at the beginning of my time at Columbus Legal Aid, she reached out to me and Columbus Legal Aid to talk about how we, we might uh, be able to get some support from the city, which we desperately needed at that time. And, and which we did get. Um, and uh, council has, um, has helped us um, to, to do domestic violence work, housing work, and other, uh, and, and other kinds of work for the low-income people in Columbus. Um, I also remember and appreciate something that happened um, around the same time when Alan Michael, the dean at Ohio State Law School, reached out to Zach Klein, who was then on the city council, to talk about an idea he had about bringing uh, lawyers into some of the low-income um, housing developments in Columbus. And um, Zach was kind enough to suggest that really I should be there for that discussion. And the three of us met and had a very uh, creative, interesting discussion, which didn't amount to anything right away, um, but did ultimately uh, end up with Community Properties of Ohio funding a lawyer um, to help their residents. Um, and so to uh, improve their lives through the resolution of their civil problems and also to help them pay their rent by making sure they had income to do that with. Um, we've collaborated with the city attorney's office, with the zone attorneys, and code enforcement to work on getting housing fixed instead of having it deteriorate to the point of needing to be demolished. We're getting orders preventing re-rental 
after eviction where there are code violations. We're working to get receivers appointed to collect rents and make repairs in dwellings where the landlord is just letting things go. The city is our partner in all of this and a valuable partner. Um, the city's also provided us with some great board members over the years. Rick Pfeiffer was on our board for over 25 years. We became close friends. Um, Melanie Tobias, he came, joined us when he was in the state senate. Melanie Tobias has taken his place from the city attorney's office, and uh, Jiza Page is on the Columbus Legal Aid Board, so that's been a big, a big help. There's one area of collaboration that I had hoped to see uh, get further during my years, and that was a collaboration between the city and legal aid in figuring out ordinances um, that might help some of our clients. Um, we could provide protections to tenants and consumers and poor people who are generally not that successful in our General Assembly. And I think that there are things that the Council could do um, to address some issues that, that would make their lives better. Um, some other Ohio cities have done interesting things in this area. And my dream is to be involved in that as a volunteer in the future in my retirement. So if any of you ever have any ideas and would like um, somebody with time on his hands to help, I would stand ready. So um, thank you again for all of your support um, over this time, and thank you for this recognition. Thank you, Mr. Weeks. Thank you. Uh, moving on, I'd like to invite uh, Patrick Premley, Dan McLean, uh, Chris Briggs, and Rico Ratliff forward to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0182X 2019 to recognize and celebrate the Department of Public Utilities Championship Water Piping Tapping Team and their contribution to the City of Columbus. Uh, Coach Patrick Premley, Cranker, uh, Dan Mc McLean Feeder, Chris Briggs, and Cooper Handler, uh, Rico Ratliff. Uh, employees of the Columbus Division of Water have competed together at the Water Pipe Tamping uh, Team since 2015. The Water Pipe Tamping is a high energy race against time to drill into a cement lined, a ductile iron pipe and install a tap with a team made up of four members, a coach, a cranker, a feeder, a copper handler in a contest that requires precision, strength and speed, all while maintaining the highest level of safety and quality. Uh, this team is very well respected and shows great sportsmanship and does an excellent job representing the city of Columbus um, and the Ohio section of the American Water uh, Works Association, not only in competition, but in the way they represent themselves, uh, their involvement in the community, and the morale they build with, within the department. Together, this team finished at the Ohio section uh, American Water Association competition four years in a row uh, in 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, where they set, set a state record of a little over one minute and seven seconds and won the Great Lakes Cup in 2017 and 2018. Uh, the City of Columbus is proud to support this team as they compete against 26 other teams from across the United States and around the world in Denver, Colorado uh, at this year's American Waterworks Association Annual Conference this next week. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to see this team in action a few weeks ago at the Water Festival and it will blow your mind. So if you ever have the opportunity to go see this, this is some very, very impressive work. Um, they got to, anytime you can actually get hundreds of elementary school students screaming on the edge of their seat uh, about public utilities, you all have done your job. <laughs> and you did it very, very well. Uh, if there are no questions from my colleagues or comments, I move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Thank you. Coach, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, uh, Council President Harden and Council members, um, we'd like to thank you and the City of Columbus for this resolution. Uh, we also like to thank the Public Utilities and our uh, director, Tracy Davies, uh, for all the support and opportunity for this. Um, it's been great. A lot of networking for these guys. Uh, they work hard, and um, we hope to bring another national championship back to Columbus. So thank you. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Lastly, President Harden, just want to make one announcement. Um, as you may aware, be aware, our region uh, and state experienced some horrific weather a little over a week ago. Uh, while the damage here in Columbus could have been much worse, we're thankful that it wasn't, uh, but our neighbors to our west in Dayton and southwest Ohio experienced a much more devastating storm. I'd like to point out the fact that we here in Columbus stand ready to help, and I'd like to highlight Director Davies and the uh, Department of Public Utilities' efforts to assist the residents of Dayton in their time of need. 
Um, Tina O'Grady, Dwayne Maynard, uh, and Jason Smith, who coordinated with officials in Dayton. Uh, Daryl Buckler, Carl uh, Stoops, Mark Ryland, Jason Roach, Ben Page, and Mark Kassler, who all helped prepare and assemble equipment to send to Dayton. Uh, Steve Layton, Jason Wilkie, uh, Chad Ziegler, and our own uh, Rico Ratliff, who's here, here today, who all went to Dayton to help deliver generators and other resources to help where they could. I uh, just want to say thank you to all those folks from Public Utilities for their efforts. Uh, I know your work to help the city of Dayton, and uh, really appreciate you all doing that in their time of need. So, thank you all for doing that, and that is all I have this evening, President Arden. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Faber. <laughs> we, we got, got new microphones. Right. <laughs> Bear with us. All right. Thank you, President Harden. Uh, just a brief announcement. Uh, I would like to uh, formally invite everyone to attend our community hours for the month of June. Uh, so on Wednesday, June 12th, we will be at the Columbus Metropolitan Library, the Driving Park Branch, that's located at 1422 East Livingston Avenue from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and then on Wednesday, June 19th, uh, we'll be at the library again, North Side Branch, located at 1423 North High Street from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. That'll be all. Thank you, Council Member. Councilmember Remy. I'm not used to, I'm not used to this thing. <laughs> Thank you, Council President Harden. Um, tonight, I'd like to invite Attorney Byron Potts, President of the Columbus Kappa Foundation, uh, Nathaniel Jordan II, Program Director of the Opioid Community Connectors, Leonard King, Kappa Alpha Psi Brothers, if you could come on down to the podium as I introduce Resolution 0181X2019 to recognize and celebrate Recovery Sunday in the city of Columbus on Saturday, June 9th. I think it's Sunday, June 9th, correct? Yes. Sunday, June 9th. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday, June 9th, 2019. The Columbus Kappa Foundation and area faith leaders are recognizing Sunday, June 9th, 2019 as Recovery Sunday. Recovery Sunday is a collaboration of faith-based entities such as churches, synagogues, mosques, and other houses of worship addressing the realities of addiction, relapse, and recovering pertaining to the opiate crisis and other substance abuse. By asking every house of worship to take a special goodwill offering and to highlight the effects of the opiate crisis on individuals, families, schools, and communities, this ecumenical and community-based effort will help build fiscal resources and social recognition of this crisis and help aid individuals in their personal recovery from abuse. According to Franklin County Public Health, opioid overdoses kill an average of seven Ohioans every day. Across the United States in 2017, nearly 48,000 fatal drug overdoses involve some type of opioid, a category that includes heroin, fentanyl, and prescription opioid, opioid painkillers. We are thankful for the work of the Columbus Kappa Foundation and area faith leaders for lifting the concerns and prayers of those who are suffering from the opioid crisis. Be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this Council does hereby recognize and celebrate Recovery Sunday on Sunday, June 9, 2019 in the City of Columbus. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you, um, President Hardin, Councilman Remy, and the rest of council, we want to just thank you for recognizing the Columbus Kappa Foundation. And just a little bit about the Columbus Kappa Foundation, it is our philanthropic wing of the fraternity of Kappa Alpha Psi. And we have uh, multiple programs that we do, and our mission is to impact the community. And that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we've been working diligently with this opiate crisis in our community, in addition to infant mortality, which council, uh, Councilwoman Tyson has recognized us and given us a resolution for that. But we also um, wanted to do something with the faith-based community on uh, June 9th at your local churches. And we have about 15 churches that have committed to talk about recovery from the pulpit. And one of the things that they're doing is becoming a resource center. Resource center is disseminating information to your congregation and other people that attend your church. And we also asked them to do an offering so we could 
bless some treatment center to help them along the way with this effort. And I would like to uh, yield the mic to our poll mark, which is the president of the Columbus uh, alumni chapter of Kappa Alpha, Kappa Alpha Psi. And I also would like to recognize our two uh, members that are community, community connectors. Barbara Clark, who has done a yeoman's effort, and Brother Leonard King. They are both uh, involved out in the community, boots on the ground, talking to people that are addicted, driving people to treatment centers. When they, uh, they're on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they go out, and we want to recognize them because they're out there talking to people that are using, that need help. And again, we want to, on behalf of the Columbus Kappa Foundation, we want to thank council for recognizing this very important date, June 9th, at your local churches, synagogues, mosques, whatever your faith-based entities that you have. And Brother Kandai, can you? Thank you. And, and as I step to the microphone, I want to acknowledge the rest of the brothers that are here, and, and if you would just simply wave that, that these are some of the members who, who support us in, in Central Ohio. We're over 300 strong. Um, I believe that Kappa is a, is a social service agency. I'm sure you see us, see us uh, publicly, and, and, and we have a good time, but we do a lot of things to impact, particularly the, that near Mount Vernon East Side community, from feeding uh, the community, from uh, uh, taking care of the, 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 uh, the, the fathers and, and leading their households to providing toys and families uh, in, in need. We are looking for partners. And so if you're looking for, for folks that can impact the community and who's doing it on a regular basis, Kappa is doing it. We're at 1461 Mount Vernon Avenue. And so you don't have to look too far. And, uh, and so we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the recognition. Uh, we'll keep doing it. And uh, we're going to break it up our silo and, and, and look for folks to, uh, to work with. Thank you for the opportunity. Brother Jordan. Yes, Council. Uh, I tell you, it takes a great pleasure to come before a supporting group of individuals who we know have our back. When we're out there in the streets and we're out there talking to individuals who are wounded, they're wounded. So what we do is we actually react. When somebody needs help, they need help right now. In our community connectors, we're out there 24 hours a day, three o'clock, those calls at three o'clock in the morning, we get up because we are committed. We are committed to make sure that we are serving our community because we got leaders like yourself supporting us. It gives us the incentive and, the, and, the, and empowers us to go out there and do that. And again, President Harden, thank you very much. Tyson, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the rest of the council. Um, thank you for all that you do, Barb and Mr. King. I appreciate, you know, the boots on the ground aspect. And I know that uh, Mr. King was the one that brought this to my attention. Um, we certainly know that our community would be far worse off if we didn't have what you're doing out in the community. And thank the Kappas because the, the amount of support that you give, especially on the Near East side, is, is really incredible. Um, I do have a question. Um, how can the public get involved in this fight against opioids? and, and can they, how can they join you? The uh, number that you can call is 614-228-2154. You can call my office, and I will connect you with our connectors, uh, Barbara Clark and Leonard King and uh, Brother uh, Nathaniel Jordan II, and uh, we will uh, make that happen. So uh, we're, they're on call. They're being uh, taken care of to be on call. Unfortunately, they get these three o'clock in the morning calls, but they do, it, it's real. So, because uh, uh, people don't uh, use drugs on a schedule. That's right. You understand? So they're always, especially early morning hours, that they're uh, on call to take these people to treatment centers. When they say, I've had enough, they won't say, well, we'll wait the nine to five to come get these people get up and go get them and drive them to treatment center. That's what they do. Thank you so much. Um, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Uh, Council, Council Member Tyson. Thank you, uh, Chair Remy, um, to the um, President Potts. 
Um, what organizations are you linking people to for their recovery um, treatment? Well, we uh, have relationships with Community for New Directions. We have re uh, relationships with uh, <coughs> almost every treatment All center. Mary Haven. So we have relations. We've developed relationships where all we have to do is call, and they will let them in, and we can walk people into the uh, treatment facilities. A lot of them, uh, you have to wait in line and, and, and do the assessment, but we have developed relationships with these different treatment facilities that we can walk them in, and that's a blessing to do that. Well, I just, as the chair of Health and Human Services, I really appreciate your efforts. Um, I know you're focusing a lot on health care in the community. I know you just had a big event, and you certainly were focusing on health. But this particular issue in our community is so important, and it is certainly an issue that um, the, the black community has known for a long time. However, now we know that there is the opioids are now in our community in a very different way, and that we have more individuals who are succumbing to um, succumbing based upon um, taking these drugs. And so to be able to have people on call 24-7 for individuals to call, especially people that they see and know in the community and having those relationships with, you know, Greg Jefferson, with Mary Haven, it's really important. So I do really appreciate your work because you're absolutely saving lives. So congratulations for the work that you do. We look forward to this continued partnership. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Adopted. Next, I am very excited to call down uh, Daisy DeAndre, uh, Daisy's sister Leslie, Marisol, and their families to come up to the podium. Today, I had the honor of having um, three Mays Elementary students, Days, Daisy, and her, well, I guess her sister Leslie, uh, DeAndre, Daisy McKenzie DeAndre Demonia Jr., Marisol Valencia. They came down to visit City Hall and shadow myself and, and my staff. Um, we t they were able to take a tour of City Hall and meet with the Department of Public Service to learn more about uh, recycling and infra infrastructure. They visited the civil service team to learn more about the jobs that the City of Columbus offers. And they got to have some discussions about the issues that we all face here in our community. Um, I, I certainly want to say thank you to all of you students that came down today, um, your families, of course, and uh, to Ms. Uh, Sonia, Sonia McClendon, who's the secretary from Mays Elementary, for helping to ar arrange this, this uh, visit today. Um, I would like to ask each of you to introduce yourselves and tell what grade you're in and one thing that you learned today, if you wouldn't mind. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Daisy McKenzie. I am from Mays Elementary. I am going to sixth grade. One interesting fact I've learned about this chamber is that the walls are made out of wool. So back in the day, they didn't have microphones. So they had to have some way to talk really loud so the wool in the walls would help them. Thank you, Emmanuel Remy, for giving me this opportunity to come and see you all. Absolutely, thank you so much. My name, my name is Marisol Valencia, and one, and I'm going to third grade. And one interesting, one interesting fact that I learned is how many years, how many years that it took for like glass bottles and stuff to like go if we didn't pick them up. So littering, so littering is bad. Yes. Thank you. 
Um, hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm DeAndre Demonia. I am going to sixth grade. And one thing I've learned is how the water that we use these days, how it comes from sewers and <laughs> water recycled, and it gets cleaned out, and then that, and then it goes to our our water our water thing our water yeah and that and then when you take showers for example when you take showers the water goes into the drain and it comes back up but the water gets cleaned again good yeah excellent thank you I go to St. Anthony. I'm going to be in first grade in St. Anthony. I learned about the walls are car cars and cars and fabric. You learned that litter is bad. <laughs> All right, well, I, I again have to thank you. I, I love um, all our partnership with the Columbus City Schools and certainly as a, a spouse of a Columbus City School teacher and three children that uh, belong or that are enrolled at Columbus City Schools. It's always a pleasure to invite some of their fellow classmates and, and uh, people from the community in uh, to represent um, our good public schools education. So I wanna, um, tell you how much pleasure I had spending time with you today. I think uh, Council Member Dorans was in there. I don't know if anybody else got a chance to stop by, but uh, thank you for stopping by and teaching us all a little bit of something about water and sewer today. Um, it was such a pleasure, and I have some certificates that I'd like to give you for, for stopping down today. So just... So in that same vein, last week we had such an awesome time here at City Hall as we were wrapping up our Cleaner Columbus litter mitigation campaign, our mascot campaign. We were so fortunate to have, um, we had a number of entries, uh, the staff and, and people down here at City Hall had the opportunity to vote on it. And we were able to come up with Scarlett, who uh, Jayla Lewis from Fort Hayes Arts and Academics High School uh, they were able to uh, make this, this is our new mascot for our, Columbus, our Cleaner Columbus Litter Mitigation Campaign. We'll be rolling that out a little bit further. Our second and third place uh, winners were from Lindbergh Elementary and Mays Elementary. So all of these schools will be involved with um, the rollout of our litter mitigation campaign. So we're super excited about that. Um, finally, I'd like to announce that I will be hosting community hours tomorrow. Um, let's see, no, not tomorrow. Monday, June 17th at Tim Hortons at 1815 Morris Road, 5 to 6.30. And then Tuesday, June 25th at Upper Cup Coffee at 79 Parsons from 335. And that is all I have this evening. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Tyson. <laughs> Thank you. I have one resolution this evening. I'm going to ask for the individuals here who are representing the Columbus section of the National Man Management Association to please walk towards the podium. And I have resolution number 179X 2019 is to recognize the week of June 2nd through June 8th of 2019 as the Leadership Week in the City of Columbus and to command the Columbus Public Service Chapter of the NMA, the Leadership Development Organization on its 41st anniversary and to apply the NMA for its leadership efforts in support of this observance in our city. Whereas June the 2nd through the 8th will be the 41st, 41st annual observance of Leadership Week in, in America by NMA, a professional organization dedicated to leadership, business excellence, 
personal and professional growth, and fellowship to more than 10,000 members. The National Management Association is also the largest nonprofit organization of its type in the United States. Whereas the City of Columbus recognizes the importance of exchanging ideas and having discussions regarding leadership challenges and solutions. As this process impacts the vitality of our community's economy by improving the quality of life, increasing productivity, competition, and ultimate growth of our city. Whereas the Columbus Public Service Chapter is the public sector chapter of the NMA, whose members strive to uphold the principles of the organization through lifelong learning, leadership development, skills training, networking, and mentoring. And whereas the International Observance of Leadership Week will encourage leaders to increase their competence, inspire their peers, foster a better understanding of management and professional leadership. Moreover, the NMA will use its national convention as a forum to highlight and promote leadership as a viable and thriving profession. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Council of the City of Columbus that we recognize the week of June 2nd through June 8th of 2019 as NMA Leadership Week in the City of Columbus and commend the Columbus Public Service Chapter of NMA for its leadership efforts and the support it has given to our city. I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Adopted. Thank you, President P. Tobler. The floor is yours. We want to thank you, President Hardin and, and Councilman, Councilwoman Tyson and all the council. Uh, thank you very much for this honor, and, and we do take it as an honor uh, to be before you once again. We want to really thank you, Councilwoman Tyson, for believing in us and continuing to support us as all of you do. We try to strive to do many great things within our city. We also do a lot of voluntary work, and we are out there mentoring. We're getting ready to have our uh, annual speech contest is coming up. So I'm just amazed at these young people that were just up, and hopefully they will be in our speech contest talking about leadership, because it's just a four to six minute speech, and as you can hear, they're already on their way. That's right. So, um, and it's for high school students, high school, home school, any school that has high school age can participate. So we really appreciate, we give back that away, we give back to the YMCA in several different ways. I do have all of my colleagues here, and I do want them to have a chance to introduce themselves. but we want to thank you for supporting us. We sincerely thank you, and we hope that you all continue to be blessed, and we continue to be leaders of this great city. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and your position. My name is Terrell Spencer. I'm with uh, safety manager with the Department of Finance, Fleet Management Division. Hello, I'm Kathy Spatz. I'm with Recreation and Parks and also have the privilege of being one of the um, past national chairmen and also national director to try and bring some of the, the really global thinking of leadership into Columbus so that we get a chance to have some of the cutting edge leadership training and opportunities to continue to help us be the best employees and give the best customer service to Columbus. Hello, I'm Katrina Whitlock. I'm with the Public Service uh, Refuse Collection Division. I'm on the, uh, also a board member of the NMA. Hi, I'm Renee Hudson with uh, Office Manager with uh, Columbus Division of Police. Um, I've been in NMA for three years and it's been beneficial when I stepped into my management role and I just want to thank you for your support. Thank you. Good afternoon, President Harden, Council Member Tyson, Council Members. I've stood here before you all many times, but this will be the last time because I want to say thank you to all of you for your continued support. I'm a 27-year veteran of the NMA, been with the city for 28 years, but a government employee for 43, so now I'm retiring this month. <laughs> so thank you and good luck and wish everybody well. Uh, my name is Keith King. I'm a systems administrator with the Department of Technology. 
Good evening. My name is Yvette Kelly Aniagalu. I'm a program manager at Department of Development. I'm also a board member of NMA. Thank you. Good evening, Diane Johnson, Department of Development. Hello, everybody. I'm Beth Fairman Kinney, and I'm with the Department of Neighborhoods, and I currently serve as the second vice president of the NMA. So as you can see, we can't do it without our team. And we look forward to continue to serve the city of Columbus in each and every way that we can. So thank you. Thank you. Tyson. Thank you. And I'll just end, I just thank you for your leadership in our city. I thank you for your willingness to continue to learn to con so that it makes our city a better place for our residents. And so just so you're very committed to your profession and I thank you listening to the years. Teresa, I wish you well. Um, you've served the city for a long time and been involved in public service and I thank you. And when I, um, so just thank you. I'll, I'll just say that with what's going, what happened this past weekend um, and, um, and Virginia Virginia. It just makes you think about the work that we do, um, the people that we work with, and, um, and keep each other safe. And, and so with, your, with great leadership skills, we continue to motivate the people that work with us. And so again, thank you and congratulations for the work that you do each and every day. Thank we you. really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an announcement this Thursday, June the 6th at 4 p.m. I'll be I will be um, holding a Health and Human Services Committee hearing to review the state of homeless youth and highlight the Community Shelter Board. The Shelter Board received 6.1 million dollars from HUD, which is intended to dr dramatically reduce homelessness among youth age 24 and younger. This hearing will focus on the shelter board and its various partners regarding the work being done to coordinate access, rapid rehousing, transitional housing, permanent supportive housing, and other services. Presentations will be given by the Huckleberry House, y, the YMCA, the Homeless Families Foundation, Kaleidoscope, the Community Housing Network, and the Community Shelter Board. Representatives from the city will also be available to answer questions and hope to see you in chambers on June 6 at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Uh, are there any comments by our elected officials, city attorney, city auditor, city treasurer? Uh, I see that we have representatives from the Northeast Area Commission uh, who I think we'll hear from in one, in one second. Uh, are there any other requests by members of council for removal of ordinance uh, or resolutions from consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the clerk will now uh, read into the record ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda. Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinance 1321-2019. Public Safety Committee, Ordinance 1447-2019. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1247, 1276, 1324, 1341, 1343, 1351, 1358, 1370, 1373, 1383, 1411, 1420, 1428, 1454, and 1457 2019. Technology Committee, Ordinance 1317 2019. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 1371 2019. Economic Development Committee, Ordinance 1451-2019. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 1433-2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We don't have any speakers on the first reading portion of the agenda. Would you now read the legislation uh, uh, that appear on uh, as consent? Resolutions of Expression 177X180X-2019. Finance Committee. Ordinances 1265, 1308, 1314, 1380, 1392, 1438, 1461, and 1464-2019. 1464 Recreation and Parks Committee. Ordinances 1114, 1261, 1269, 1272-2019. Public Safety Committee. Ordinances 1250 and 1528-2019. Veterans and Senior Affairs Committee. Ordinance 1260-2019. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 1175, 1241, 1273, 1282, 1304-2019.
Technology Committee Ordinance 886-2019, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Resolution 153X, Ordinances 173, 1255, 1279, 1280, 1310, 1395, 1413, 1432, and 1436-2019. Housing Committee, Ordinances 1274, 1284, 1368, 1369, 1404, 1410, 1450, 1468, 1484, and 1485-2019. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, Ordinances 1409 and 1424-2019. Economic Development Committee, Ordinances 1377, 1452-2019. Administration Committee, Ordinance 1435-2019. Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 1235, 1302, 1355, 1356, 1359, 1360, 1363, 1367, 1360, I'm sorry, 1367, lost my place, 1386, 1445, and 1475-2019. dash Small and Minority Business Ordinance 1522-2019. Uh, Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0078. 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, and 87, dash 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have one speaker on the consent action portion of the agenda, uh, Mr. Nathaniel uh, Wilkins. Welcome back to council. Uh, Mr. Wilkins is speaking on ordinance number 1369 in the housing committee. Sixteen twelve Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lieutenant George Wilkins. Um, I'm against uh, 1369 2019, uh, 1562 Genesee Avenue. It, uh, the reason why I'm against this property is because it doesn't give any other contractors the opportunity to buy the houses that sit through the land bank. I do remember this property had sit vacant for quite some time that it was no sell for sale sign as I moved in my house at 1612 Arlington Avenue. I had a couple contractors that came to me was interested in buying the property right then and there. Um, I had another individual that wanted another property on Genesee Avenue, couldn't get it. Um, it, that's also in disrepair. So again, the reason why I'm against this, I don't want any other person to get this property because it includes other contractors that I know that wanted that property, couldn't get it at the time. So again, I, I, I like to see more speedy action with property that's holding the land bank for emergency legislation for shorten up the time with a telephone number onto these properties for, uh, for, for a short period of time, less than 20 days away. If there's no action, we don't want to have property that sit idolized, empty, and vacant for a long time, that, that somebody wants this property as immediately. Um, like I said, again, I have one individual of a contractor, pretty well known in Linden, uh, renovated, rundown property, and it doesn't give that person the annual opportunity. So again, I, I'm, I'm standing up here and telling you why that I'm against this property once again. Um, so we can look at some other entities by moving emergency properties or land bank properties in somebody else's hand or capable of uh, renovating for low-income housing. So again, I'm against this because I don't know who's going to get this parcel. I hope it's not Habitat or anybody else. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, and just to be clear, the, the gentleman that, or the person that was uh, interested in 15, it was specifically this piece of property Would you, I just want to make sure that we're following up on the correct piece, just so to, and, and that the process was, was followed correctly. Thank you, Director. Are there any additional questions or comments on the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, we're going to get a motion for passage. Second. Is there a second? Please call the roll. Ms. Brown. Mr. Brown. Dorans? Yes. Favor? Yes. Remy? Yes. 
Tyson. Yes, with the exception of 1302-2019 and 1359-2019, on which I am abstaining. President Hardin. Yes, consent agenda items are passed. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30-day table emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. Councilmember Brown chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Um, tonight in finance, we are considering first uh, the adoption of our capital improvements program and our capital improvements budget for 2019. We have two area commissioners here um, that would like to speak on the budget in particular. So I will invite you up on the, at the front end of, of this ordinance, if you don't mind. Um, commissioners Elwood Rayford and uh, Barbara Wright. One or both of you is welcome to speak. Thank you um, to our Northeast Area Commissioners who are here tonight. Good evening, President Shannon and Pro Tem, uh, Ms. Brown. I am Barbara Wright. I'm part of the Northeast Area Commission and a resident of Common Ridge Civic Association. I'm here to speak on things that are important that are in need in my community. I attended the Finance Committee public hearing on the 2019 capital budget held at Barnett Recreation Center by Pro Temp President Elizabeth C. Brown on May the 14th. First, I notice when hearings or meetings are held in different quadrants of this city, they are mostly held in rec centers that are air conditioned. Well, my community would like to have these type of meetings held at our center, which is Howard Rec Center, so there is no air condition. Howard Rec Center was built in the late 70s. So on behalf of the Northeast area, we would like to have Howard Rec Center upgraded with air condition plus other amenities as swimming pools, tennis and basketball courts, shelter house. Treat our community as other communities have been treated or are being treated. We are taxpayers as well. So the seniors in our, community, in our community need more forms of outlet to stay active and for helping the youth to stay active and out of trouble. I attend Marion Franklin Recreation Center, which is 20 minutes plus from where I live off of Cassidy Avenue, takes me 10.9 miles away from a community that's right down the street from me. The reason I'm asking for these amenities is because we have Cassidy Elementary School across the street, Mifflin Middle School in the back, and Mifflin High School down the street. So we need these things in our community to make us viable and to keep our youth out of trouble. More important, there is plenty of carryover funds from the last bond issue that can be utilized in my community. The city has no problem taking uh, property by eminent domain, so there's plenty of property on Cassidy Avenue that you can do so. Second, Cassidy Avenue is in dire need of sidewalks from I-220, I-670, Airport Drive, all the way to Agler Road. There have been numerous deaths, accidents on this particular strip of Cassidy Avenue. Due to speeding, the semi-trucks from the post office and the increased traffic flow daily on Cassidy Avenue. So the Cumberland Ridge Civic Association, we were able to get the flashing speed signs on the posted on the east and west side of Cassidy Avenue, but that still does not help traffic still speeds. So thank you for allowing me to speak on, the, on behalf of the Northeast Area Commission and Cumberland Ridge Association. And for Avocat, we will remember and we will be watching when the next vote election comes up. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Would you like to add anything or was Ms. Wright speaking for both I second that. Okay. <laughs> that is a good addition. Um, I thank you both for continuing to, being, to be strong advocates for your neighborhood and community. Um, Ms. Wright, I will say one of my, uh, on, a, on a light note, if you'll permit me, one of my favorite moments of our whole capital budget hearing process was when you went up to the front and collected business cards from every single department up there. It was, um, I, I liked it. <laughs> Sure. And I was asked had I contacted anyone. I am a, a substitute school teacher, and we were doing testing that week. I don't allow my students to use cell phones in the classroom, so I couldn't get on my cell phone. So that's one reason I have. But I will be contacting you <laughs> next week. You can be sure. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Um, and we, we really appreciate 
the, the advocacy and um, when area commissioners are so specific about what they want to see in their neighborhoods, it really does help our departments formulate their, their plans. As you pointed out, the most recently approved bond package did designate funds for recreation and um, parks facilities. And depending on debt capacity each year, you know, that is a very important part of our, our package. So the fact that voters um, approved that and gave us the authority to continue to, to spend on our recreation and parks facilities is key. We have a lot to do um, to keep up standards in every single neighborhood. So thank you. Um, so we will start with um, the Capital Improvements Program, um, Resolution 0162X-2019 to accept the Capital Improvements Program 2019 to 2024 as the primary guide for future capital improvements budget ordinances and to declare an emergency. A Capital Improvements Program, or CIP, provides guidance for planned capital investments over the next five years. The current CIP reflects the priorities identified in the 2016 and 2019 voted bond packages. These priorities include investments in affordable housing, public safety and health, roads and sidewalks, including safe routes to school, recreation and parks facilities, and clean drinking water and other public utility infrastructure. Uh, I will highlight uh, the 2019 budget priorities in the next ordinance, but are there any questions or comments from my colleagues relating to the CIP ordinance first? Seeing none, I move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Adopted. Thank you. Uh, next, we have ordinance 1326-2019 to adopt a capital improvements budget for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2019, or until such a time as a new capital improvements budget is adopted, establishing a project budget for capital improvements requiring legislative authorization in 2019 to authorize the city auditor to appropriate funds within the streets and highways geo bond fund, the Northland and other acquisitions bonds fund, and the development taxable bonds fund, to authorize the city auditor to transfer funds between projects within the safety geo bonds fund, the streets and highways geo bond fund, and Construction Management Capital Improvements Fund, the Northland and Other Acquisitions Bonds Fund, the Development Taxable Bonds Fund, and the Streets and Highway Non-Bond Fund to repeal Ordinance Number 1010-2018 as amended and to declare an emergency. We first read this ordinance on May 13th. At that time, we tabled the capital budget in order to hold four neighborhood-based hearings to review these investments um, neighborhood by neighborhood in the city. We finished our final two hearings last week and are now considering the budget for passage. I want to thank the department staff, um, particularly the Department of Finance. Um, thank you, Director Joe Lombardi, and all the directors who attended and sent their teams uh, to the budget hearings. I want to thank my, um, all of my council colleagues who joined me at these hearings. Departments presented planned capital projects specific to the areas where the hearings were held, and we received localized feedback on neighborhood priorities. Indeed, there is a lot to get done in this city, um, and the 2019 capital budget represents um, that ongoing work, but we know there is, there is more to do each year. I also want to highlight that earlier in the year, my office coordinated meetings attending 26 area commissions and civic associations throughout the city to gather feedback in advance of the um, introduction of the capital budget. Capital projects are some of the most direct ways we improve our neighborhoods. They are physical investments. That's why we spend so much time trying to be out in public talking about the budget um, and garnering feedback. Although we are voting on the 2019 capital budget tonight, the process truly is ongoing. I know departments will soon be working on their capital budgets for next year. Um, Director Lombardi reminds us often the budget process never ends, it just reinvents itself. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I hope that residents and area commissions and civic associations will continue sharing their priorities with me, um, with all of council, as we are keeping track of them. We will continue to highlight them. This council prioritizes uh, open and accessible investments uh, with, our, with our residents, because no one knows more about their residents, uh, more about their neighborhood, excuse me, than the people who live there. Um, with that, I, if there's any comments or questions from colleagues. Yeah. 
Chairwoman Brown, I don't have any questions about this particular issue, but I do want to just go back to Director Lombardi and also to Director Collins, and just goes and, and I um, because I know we just passed the CIP, and certainly just listening to the uh, representatives from the Area Commission and asking for air conditioning in a recreation center, and I know that when I chaired Rex and Parks. 2007, that was a big issue, and we were definitely put money in the budget to continue to upgrade those recreation centers because it is really difficult to be in them when they're hot and more people are utilizing them. And so I guess my question is, you know, is there, is there a plan to, to consider, you know, recreation facilities getting upgrades? I don't know which one, Director Collins, Director Lombardi, either one. Councilmember Tyson, members of council, thanks for the question. You know, we have a, a capital planning process that we go through with our department where we first look at investment into our own, our existing facilities. Over 60% of our budget is allocated to existing facility improvements and repairs. And air conditioning is a pocket of those, those repairs. Uh, we are right now in the process of uh, renovating the Indian Mound Community Center. It'll be open in the fall of this year. That was a, an air conditioning and, and other improvements uh, uh, um, uh, example, uh, we obviously tonight we'll be talking about the Linden Community Center, which is the next one on the list. Uh, and our team is right now looking at centers across the system and identifying where the greatest need is. Thank you. And, and I just want to make sure that I, I was asking that question because I want to make sure that that stays in place because we have a lot of recreation centers and now they're serving adults and children. Their kids have different illnesses. Now they can't be outside and adults. And so I just want to make sure that we're continuing to think about that and making sure that, you know, we want to have these types of amenities in our community, continue to invest in them. There's a Brookings report that was just out about, the, you know, making sure that we're putting investments in communities that certainly have more communities of color. And I know that that neighborhood that um, they were just speaking to how important that is to so that those so those properties can continue to be increased in value so I would hope that we can you know continue to have these discussions and some of the, I know you won't be here director Collins but certain whoever is going to be sitting in that seat but also director Joe Lombardi to continue to think about and direct and President Pro Tem Brown, who's leading the finance and recreation and parks, to be considering that it is very costly to upgrade those centers, and um, and you have to, you know, I know that from from funding that, but again, it is an amenity I think is really important to our residents. So, Director Collins, Director Lombardi, President Pro Tem Brown, hope that that will stay on your radar to continue to move our res our. Um, those neighborhoods forward, and um, and certainly, and and thank you for your leadership on this uh, on the capital budget. Thank you. Absolutely, it's it's on our radar every day for sure, and I appreciate the the leadership of um, directors Lombardi and Collins in trying to sketch out a feasible, actionable plan to really get all of our facilities up up to up to par, up to what we, um, you know, know our residents want and expect. Um, my, my last thank yous before I request to move from the table, I, I want to thank um, Mayor Ginther for his leadership in proposing um, this capital budget. I want to thank Auditor Kilgore um, for her ongoing leadership in making sure our finances are strong and that we can afford um, as much as possible on the capital side. And I again want to thank um, Council President Hardin and the rest of my colleagues uh, for joining us at these hearings. Seeing no further comments or questions, I... Um, Move to remove from the table. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Removed. And I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 1223-2019 to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management on behalf of the Facilities Management Division to enter into contract with CBRE Government Services, LLC, for facility management services at the Jerry Hammond Center and the Franklin County Municipal Court Building, to authorize the transfer and appropriation of $82,146 from the general fund to the property management fund, to authorize the transfer of $139,355 between divisions within the general fund, to authorize the expenditure of $1,110,757 from the property management fund to authorize the expenditure of $1,298,465 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. 
Through this contract, CBRE will be responsible for maintenance, janitorial, and security services at the Jerry Hammond Center and the Municipal Court Building. They will also establish capital plans to keep each building in good operating condition. The initial term of this contract will be for one year with four annual renewal options. The renewals are on a year-to-year -year basis and are subject to approval from Council. Emergency action is being considered so that facility management services at these buildings can begin without delay. I have one question before I move for passage. The renewals on a year-to-year -year basis, are there any constraints of, of, about what Council can consider in um, deciding whether to uh, renew year over year? Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Brown. The, the only um, issues we are not issues, the only stipulation in our uh, approvals is that each year we would have to come back to Council uh, annually, um, and we do have a right not to extend the contract should there be any issues with the current services that were being provided. Um, we would also look at any of the um, services that we may want to take on ourselves at any one of those buildings. So each year we'll, we'll look at that. But that the only stipulation is that we would have to have appropriations, but it still would still need the approval of City Council. Okay, thank you. Any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorns, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. I am done in finance, but may I move to recreation and parks? Please. Thank you. Um, first, we have Ordinance 1270-2019 to authorize the Director of the Recreation and Parks Department to enter into contract with Elford Incorporated for the Linden Park and Facility Improvements Project to authorize the expenditure of $24,800,000 and to declare an emergency. This project will demolish the existing Linden Community Center and construct a new 55,000 square foot facility. The new community center will help address many of the needs and concerns raised by residents during the process of developing the One Linden Community Transformation Plan. The center will function under Recreation and Park's new Center of Opportunity model. This means that in addition to your standard gymnasium, dance studio, walking track, it will also have space for high quality programming and partnerships to improve additional services for Linden residents. The surrounding park will undergo a renovation that will include new walking paths and lighting, sports fields, a Columbus Blue Jackets themed playground, a new splash pad, and an open shelter and performance pavilion. This represents a substantial investment that will not only help serve the community's immediate needs, but will also serve as a catalyst for future economic and community development. Emergency action is being considered tonight to allow for the construction schedule to begin as soon as possible, allowing for completion as soon as possible by the fall of next year. Before I um, take questions or comments from colleagues, I want to turn it over to Director Collins, who brought some very pretty boards. Um, you all have some slides on your computer to further appreciate um, the design of this center. But um, if you could also talk, Director Collins, about you know, what we can't see on the boards, which is truly the innovative model that uh, you and the department are bringing to Linden. Thank you, Council President Pro Tem, President Hardin, members of Council. We're very excited to have this legislation in front of you today. It's two years of culminating work, working first as a, a long-term planning process to improve equity to access to our facilities. Uh, just like Councilmember Tyson had mentioned, as well as investment in our existing facilities to make sure that we're providing uh, great opportunities for our kids, families, and adults and to, to grow together. Uh, what you see in front of you, I, Council Member, you, uh, President Pro Tem, you just went through a great description of a lot of the unique pieces and components of this project, but just to reemphasize, this is a complete rebuild of Linden Park, uh, which will be coming, uh, which is already a, you know, a, a long time uh, important piece of the community, but will become a gem for the city, uh, and we're very excited about it. We'll feature, uh, as you mentioned, a 55,000 square foot community center with some very unique spaces, including a teaching kitchen, a music studio, uh, as well as a learning lab and uh, health and wellness facilities, including our first indoor walking track, uh, elevated walking track. So we're very excited to be able to bring this together for the community, for Linden. Uh, with our partnership with the, the Health Department and Celebrate One, as well as uh, neighborhoods, we've had a lot of community input, a lot of partnership opportunities here. We'll be working with uh, the Health Department as well as Celebrate One in terms of serving our, our neighborhood. Uh, this in a new opportunity center model, inviting unique partnerships into this center. 
Uh, the last thing I'll just add is that we're also excited that this will, uh, we'll be using a CBA uh, to build this project. So we'll be inviting our, our local community as well as uh, local labor teams in to help uh, be a part of this project. We're very excited to get the groundwork started uh, pa upon passing of this ordinance. We'll break ground in July. Uh, we will uh, hope to open the center in the fall of 2020. And in the meantime, while we are uh, waiting for the center to be built, uh, we will be running the Linden Community Center programming as we always have at the Linmore Education Center. Uh, we were actually moving the entire sign so that it says uh, Linden Community Center right outside of the building so the neighbors and everyone will know. And we will have a comprehensive outreach and communication strategy with our help, with help from uh, Director William Scott uh, to get out to the neighborhood and make sure everybody knows where those programs have been moved and, and so kids and families can continue, continue that work. Thank you, so, thank you so much, Director Collins. Are there any questions or comments from colleagues? A teaching kitchen. It's going to be pretty, that's, that's right up your alley, Council Member Tyson. The local food action plan. Um, all right, we'll see nothing further. I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Uh, finally, my final ordinance of the night is 1375-2019 to authorize the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks to enter into a grant agreement with the Greater Columbus Sports Commission in support of the 2020 Gay Softball World Series, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund, and to declare an emergency. In 2018, Columbus was selected to host the 2020 Gay Softball World Series for the third time in 10 years. The event is a week-long athletic competition that will take place starting on August 24, 2020. The tournament is expected to attract more than 5,000 participants from 45 cities and 25 states and will result in more than $7 million in direct spending by visitors to our city. This funding will provide resources to the Greater Columbus Sports Commission that are necessary for planning this event. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, President Hardin, that's all I have. Thank you, Chair. The next committee to come before Council is the Public Safety Committee. Councilmember Mitch Brown chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Tonight in Public Safety, I have Ordinance 0932-2019 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to issue a purchase order to Farber Specialty Vehicles for the upgrade of Hazardous Materials Vehicle 4, which includes the purchase and installation of all pertinent equipment for the Division of Fire, to waive the competitive bidding provisions of City Council Chapter 329, to authorize an expenditure of $32,709 from the Safety Bond Fund, and to declare an emergency. This legislation authorized the Finance Management Director to issue a purchase order to Farber Specialty Vehicles for the upgrade, again, of Hazardous Materials Vehicle Number 4 for the Division of Fire. The vehicle has been employed by the Division of Fire on frontline emergency hazardous materials response runs since 2006. And while it has a 20-year expected life expectancy, the internal weather monitoring equipment used in hazardous incidents response is in the need of immediate replacement. Uh, Deputy Director Prashadi, would you like to speak to the issue about wait, the bid waiver, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Council President um, Hardin, Council Chair Brown, um, <clears throat> excuse me. This uh, is absolutely in need of immediate upgrade and replacement um, due to its use in daily hazardous materials responses. Um, Farber Specialty Vehicles is the original manufacturer of the aforementioned unit and is familiar with the original design and layout of the response unit, which would facilitate a more expedient delivery of the equipment upgrade. Thus, we are requesting a waiver of competitive bidding. If there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Also this evening, we have Ordinance 1347-2019 to authorize the City Auditor to transfer funds between projects within Safety's Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the Finance and Management Director to issue a purchase order to Zoll Medical Corporation for the purchase of defibrillators on behalf of the Division of Fire to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code 
to authorize an expenditure of $149,850.25 from the safety bond fund and to declare an emergency. This legislation authorizes the finance manager director to issue a purchase order to Zoll Medical Corporation for the purchase of electronic electrical defibrillators for the Division of Fire. The Division of Fire is in need of purchasing Zoll Medical Corporation defibrillators for use in daily frontline EMS response. Zoll Medical Corporation is offering special pricing that exceeds savings in their current state term pricing. The resulting in the need for a bid waiver, this purchase includes the trade-in of existing equipment that is nearing the end of its useful life cycle and is in the need of replacement, which requires a waiver of the surplus property requirements of the city code. Deputy Director Pashadi. I have nothing further, sir. Uh, again, the defibrillators are the devices that are used whenever someone has a sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, if there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. That's all I have this evening, sir. We get confused all the time, yeah. <laughs> Tonight in public service and transportation, uh, we have ordinance number 1312-2019 to authorize the chief innovation officer to execute a professional service contract with Capiche Traffic Com USA Incorporated relative to the Smart Columbus CVE roadside unit system integrator project to authorize the transfer between object classes and the expenditure of up to $1,050,000 from the Smart City Grant Fund to pay for the expenditure and to declare an emergency. In 2016, the City of Columbus, acting through the Department of Public Service, applied for and won the Smart City Challenge, receiving a $40 million grant from U U.S. Department of Transportation and a $10 million grant from the Paul G. Allen Family Foundation. As part of Columbus's overall response to the Smart City Challenge, efforts were focused to select a vendor to provide and program infrastructure technology to enable the transportation environment and develop and deploy the CV applications that enable the enhanced safety and mobility features Smart Columbus desires. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you, that's all we have. Thank you, Chair Favor. The next committee to come before the Economic Development Committee is, uh, the next committee is, uh, <laughs> the next committee to come before is the Economic Development Committee and it's chaired by Councilman Remy. Councilman, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, President Hardin. Um, I would like, we have two items in the Economic Development Committee, actually three. Um, items in economic development. I'd like to invite Vice President of Agility Partners, Kyle Leppi, to the podium as I introduce Ordinance Number 1328-2019 to authorize the Director of Department of Development to enter into a Columbus Downtown Office Incentive Agreement with Agility Partners, LLC. Founded in January 2017, Agility Partners is an IT professional resourcing and consulting firm that connects leading corporations, startups, and nonprofit organizations with IT talent and solutions. Agility Partners is a minority business enterprise headquartered in downtown Columbus. Its customers include companies such as NetJet, SafeFlight, Cardinal Health, Eli Lilly, Anthem, and Wendy's. Agility Partners is proposing to invest a total project cost of approximately 135,000, which includes 15,000 in leasehold improvements, 60,000 in standalone computers, and 60,000 in furniture and fixtures to expand its corporate headquarters in downtown Columbus. The company proposes to improve its existing office space consisting of approximately 3,176 square feet at 175 South 3rd Street, um, to accommodate its increased sales growth and consumer demands and invest more in information technology software development. Additionally, Agility Partners will create 30 net new full-time job permanent positions with an annual payroll of approximately 2,500,000 and retain 50 full-time positions with an annual payroll of approximately 4.48 million at the project site. Agility Partners LLC is requesting a downtown office incentive from the City of Columbus to assist in, in the expansion of this project. Kyle, the floor is yours. 
Uh, yes, I uh, just want to thank the City of Columbus and this council. Um, and this is my first time ever being here, so uh, just thank you guys. And we look forward to, uh, to hopefully creating more jobs here in the city. I appreciate that. Uh, Director Shoney, would you, do you have any comments about this legislation? Uh, thank you, Chair, President Harden, Mem President Harden, members of Council. Um, we're excited to see continued growth within the IT sector in Columbus. Um, the project is going to be located in uh, one of the older buildings that's along um, uh, Columbus Common. So again, we're continuing to see payback for the city's investments in things like green space as we look to be not just um, a cost-effective place for employers, but a place where employers can really attract talent because at the end of the day, it's about having locations and having buildings where our employers feel like they can attract the talent they need to be successful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Shoney. Appreciate your uh, comments this evening. Are there any um, questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the row. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you very much. Next, Thank you. I appreciate you coming down tonight, Mr. Levy. Um, next, I'd like to invite Matt Canterbury and Boyce Safford to the podium as I introduce ordinance number 1486, 2019, to authorize the Director of Department of Development to enter into an economic development agreement with Dell Partners, LLC, concerning the redevelopment of the former McNabb um, funeral home site in the King Lincoln District on the Near East Side and to declare an emergency. The development project has been undertaken in cooperation and partnership with the City of Columbus and Columbus Next Gen Corporation to result in a mixed use project on the site that includes the construction of 130 residential units and up to 10,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space. The private investment in the project will be approximately $20 million. Design and construction of the public infrastructure improvements through and around the site will incur, occur in conjunction with the development of the project. Improvements will be constructed on East Long from Garfield to Monroe, Garfield Avenue from Long Street to maybe Moore Place, and Monroe Avenue from Long Street to Mount Vernon. Streetscapes will include new pavement, new curbs to replace existing, sandstone curbs to be refurbished where needed, six-foot sidewalks, um, pedestrian lighting, litter receptacles, and street trees and necessary utility relocation work. The Economic Department ag Development Agreement outlines the plans and, and certain commitments of both parties relating to the development. Under the Economic Development Depart Agreement, the Department of Development will over time submit for City Council consideration all necessary legislation to authorize the following. A design guarantee maximum reimbursement agreement to reimburse the de de development team for professional services associated with the design of the public infrastructure improvements and the expenditure of funds to construct the public infrastructure improvements to be made in this support of the project. Matt, I'd like to give you the opportunity to speak about this project a little bit further. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak in front of council. Uh, with this, um, representing our partners, Kingsley and Company, and our partnership with uh, Columbus Next Gen, Boer is very happy to be part of this development. We do believe that our over $20 million of uh, investment into this neighborhood is going to go a long way as a catalyst project for the future growth down the Long Street corridor and then throughout the King Lincoln Bronzeville area. So with that, we did seek counsel of the city and the development department to then move forward and talk about all the various infrastructure pieces and parts that would then look forward to the future of this community. Our development is consistent with the 2002 King Lincoln District plan in density, height, use, to create a entertainment district in this area between that of the Lincoln Theater and the King Arts Complex. So we do believe that this is going to drive future development, both private and public, throughout this realm. Thank you. Boyce, do you have any comments? Thank you, President Harding, uh, Committee Chair Remy, and other members of council, and my good friends over there and other elected officials. It's, it's good to be down here this evening. Apologize for not being properly dressed. I uh, didn't know I was going to speak this evening, but as I learned from Morehouse, I always be prepared. So I'm prepared. We're, I'm very excited stand before you and talk about this wonderful project. Many of you have been with uh, the former mayor and myself as we ventured down Long Street to bring excitement and entertainment along Long Street in the King Lincoln Bronzeville area with cultural investment with the Lincoln Theater, private sector investment with the 750 building. 
This is a continuation of that effort and it's long overdue that we're able to join forces and find a qualified developer who can do financing and bring in quality apartments to that sector of Long Street. We are very excited. And so we're going to be working on things to further share with you the exciting news, but we're excited about that. And we're pleased that the city of Columbus is joining with the board team and the Kingsley team and putting forth this nice project. $20 million on Long Street outside of public investment is something to cheer about. And we couldn't have done it without the support of the city, primarily Director Shoney and his team, public service, and looking at helping going to guide the infrastructure improvements, not only on this site, but into the community to make it a very attractive place to live, work, and recreate in our near east side community. So with that, I will end. If there are any questions of me, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Just a comment. Yeah. Uh, one, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for uh, leading this process. Thank you to the director. This, um, there's so many things to be proud of and excited about, about this project. One, the diversity component, the fact that this, I think, is a majority minority uh, project or, or part. Uh, it's 51% it's, uh, owned by a minority uh, company out of Cincinnati. That is very important um, that this type of development that is happening in a historic uh, uh, African American neighborhood. Uh, has that type of participation, something that should be applauded. Um, but, but also, I mean, this is going to be a catalytic project for uh, a very, very important uh, corridor in our city. And uh, it has been done well. It has been done with engagement. Um, where we started off at the beginning is uh, not even not where we ended up because of good community engagement. And I just appreciate all the partners who stuck at it, who uh, incorporated historical aspects. I want to thank Councilmember uh, Tyson and, and Brown, who helped us engage with some of the pieces uh, around saving pieces of the old McNabb to get that incorporated into the project. All around, this is a good story to tell, and it will be a part of uh, the rich history and legacy of the King Lincoln Bronzeville uh, community going forward. Well, I appreciate that. It was very important, and i also like to thank Councilperson Tyson for uh, making sure that we included this historical elements. You'll be pleasantly surprised of the addition of that facade on the new building. I think it's going to resonate very well in the community. Uh, we're making sure that we honor the past and keep the cultural history in place as Longstreet looks towards the future. It's very important that that happens. Um, can't speak enough of the development team as far as diversity, not only on the ownership, but on the private side, they're going to make a commitment in hiring minority contractors to be involved on the private side. And so that's very important that we include everyone in the community to contribute to the success of this community. Thank you. Director Shoney. Uh, thank you, Chair, President Hart, members of council. Um, I could wax poetic about this project for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, just allow me to say a couple things. First of all, I want to thank um, Mr. Safford, you know, we talk a lot about how we uh, stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Um, and in this one, uh, we have the opportunity to honor the buildings um, that are there. And I want to take this opportunity to honor uh, Boyce, because as my predecessor, um, it's not lost on me that I started sitting in this chair six years ago today. And we would not be getting this project done if it wasn't for the work that Boyce has started and has, we've continued to partner on uh, since he's been at NextGen. So I do want to thank Boyce. Uh, for that and also now for the boring stuff in terms of the technical of what's happening here um, we are partnering with utilities and public service to make sure that we're doing the infrastructure around the project that's what this legislation is specifically related to we uh, will probably have some additional legislation coming related to funds that we're going to be providing next gen to help with building out some of the actual stuff within the building uh, this is very important in terms of setting the setting the stage for the infrastructure as we continue to move, not just down Long Street, but throughout the Near East Side, um, and setting the standard that we hope to see continue throughout the neighborhood. Thank you very much, Director. I, I know I, for one, am very excited about this. You know, when we had people come down and doing the zoning, there was so much support revol revolving around this particular project. So we feel very comfortable that um, we're, do we're doing a great thing here in the King Lincoln Bronzeville area <laughs> of the city. So uh, are there any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Chair, if it's all right, I'm going to step in. Uh, we're right up at our past time for zoning, so um, can I have a, a motion for recess? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. The zoning committee will start momentarily. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. All members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I will briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents and three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side. And we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against a council variance, including staff, please stand and raise your right hand and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. First, since we have a lengthy zoning agenda, agenda this evening, I want to take care of waiving second reading on those that need it before we begin the agenda. I move to waive second reading on the following ordinances. 1387 2019, 1388 2019, 1397 2019, 1406-2019, 1408-2019, 1412-2019. Thank you, and I will also do 1407 Second. 2019. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Wait. Thank you. All right. The first ordinance is 1387-2019. It is to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3363.01, manufacturing districts of the Columbus City Codes, and for the property located at 829 South Front Street to permit a single unit dwelling in the M manufacturing district the applicant is Patrick Lynch. The proposed use is a single unit dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Bureau District Commission recommendation is approval five to zero. And we have, um, we'll have a, a staff presentation. The site is developed with a vacant office building in the M manufacturing district. The requested council variance will permit the existing building to be converted into a single unit dwelling. The council variance is necessary to allow a ground floor residential use in the M manufacturing district. The site is located within boundaries of the southern tier of the brewery district plan, which supports residential uses. The proposal is also consistent with the residential uses that are prevalent in the surrounding neighborhood. Therefore, city department's recommendation is for approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. I will now there, um, we have one speaker who was for this ordinance and it is Mr. Mark, is it, I think it's Arison or Allison? Allison, good evening. And he is in support of this ordinance. Please state your name and who you represent. Yes, my, my name is Mark Allison. I'm a resident, uh, live directly across the street from this. Uh, at 836 South Front Street. I have been a resident for uh, approximately 40 years in the Brewery District. Uh, I was a member of the original Planning and Steering Committee that drafted and wrote the uh, Brewery District Plan. And uh, as the staff member uh, stated, the Brewery District Plan has three tiers that were created in that plan. The southern tier was reserved for residential uses, and uh, this, that's, a, that's the area below Frankfurt Street in the Brewery District. Uh, there is no more manufacturing in the Brewery District. The plan has been wildly successful beyond the dreams of any of us 
who uh, were residents down there at the time. Doesn't look anything like it one, once was. Uh, it's been highly successful, and I'm here tonight really just to urge council to dust off that plan, to uh, refresh your own familiarity with it, if I might say so, and to give those of us who took residential stakes in that area some protection uh, from the onslaught of development that is occurring in that area. When we first drafted that plan, it was our intention to have a mixed use in the southern tier with commercial applications being mainly restricted to the high street corridor and to reserve for residents those areas that were not along high street with the exception of very low impact uses such as professional offices or uh, banks or that sort of thing that were uh, not dependent on high volume uh, automobile turnover and instead uh, would uh, be closed during the evening hours so that while there was a mixed use and a bustle during the day, the, uh, the area largely went to sleep off High Street or quieted down at least so that residents could talk over their backyard pheasant, uh, fences and in general raise families in that area. And so I hope that you will uh, consider that again a single use, uh, single family use is just what we envision down there. Uh, and, and I hope that uh, going forward you will keep in mind uh, the, the spirit of the Brewery District plan with respect to residential uh, fosters in the uh, southern tier. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Allison, for coming down. Oops. First of all, thank you for coming down and certainly for your, uh, your service and um, helping to prepare the Bureau District plan. And if there are no other questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1388-2019 to rezone 7230 East Broad Street being 8.8 .8 acres located on the north side of East Broad Street, 750 feet uh, east of Reynoldsburg, New Albany Road from our rural district to LAR1 Limited Apartment and Residential District. The applicant is Metro Development LLC, care of Jeffrey Brown. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Far East Side, Far East Area, Rec Area Commission's recommendations approval 501. I first want to amend, ask the to the clerk. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1389-2019. It is to grant a variance from provisions of sections 3333.18, building lines of the Columbus Sea Code to the property located at 7230 East Broad Street to permit a multi-unit residential development with reduced building line in the LAR1 limited res apartment residential district. The applicant is Metro Development LLC, care of Jeffrey Brown. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Far East Area Commission's recommendation is approval 501. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1390-2019 to rezone 5720 North Hamilton Road, being 2.6 acres located on the east side of Hamilton Road, 275 feet north of, of Preserve Boulevard from CPD, the Commercial Plan Development District, to CPD, Commercial Plan Development District. And the applicant is Swenson's Drive-In Restaurants, the uh, care of Attorney David Hodge, the proposed use is a drive-in restaurant. The city department's recommendation is approval, and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval, 18-0 to 1. If there's no questions or comments, I uh, first move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. 
Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Amend it. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1391-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.035 R3 residential district 3332.05 A4 area district lot with width requirements, 3332.13 R3 area district requirements, and 3332.21 F building lines of the Columbus Sea Codes for the property located at 1432 Oak Street to permit a two unit dwelling on each side of two contiguous parcels with reduced development standards in the R3 residential district. The applicant is integrity. Trust Homes LLC, care of Dave Perry. The proposed use is a two unit, two two unit dwellings. The city department's recommendation is approval and then Near East Air Commission's recommendation is approval 12 to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I first move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Amend it. Thank you, and I see uh, President Kathleen Bailey's in chambers, and I first, and I now move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1397-2019 to rezone 6261 Wright Road, being 3.4 acres located at the southeast corner of Wright Road and Gender Road from CPD Commercial Plan Development District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is Homewood Corporation, care of Attorney Laura McGregor Comack. The proposed use is commercial development. The State Department's recommendation is approval. The Greater Southeast Area Commission's recommendation is approval eight to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1406-2019. It's to rezone 20, 2555 Bethel Road, being 2.05 acres located on the south side of Bethel Road at Pickford Drive from L, LC2 Limited Commercial District to LC4 Limited Commercial District. The applicant is Habitat for Humanity and the in care of attorney John Gleason. The proposed use is for retail uses. The C Department's recommendation is approval and the Northwest Civic Association's recommendation is approval eight to zero. Um, if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. I certainly want to recognize uh, President E.J. Thomas of the uh, Habitat for Half Humanity from, from Mid Ohio. And I also want to congratulate you, uh, um, E.J., on the, your Rose's graduation from high school. <laughs> Congratulations to you. And uh, I love seeing her. And uh, Congratulations, job well done. Looking forward to hearing as she continues to move forward in her collegiate experience. Congratulations, sir. The next, uh, okay. the next ordinance is 1407-2019 to rezone 2323 Performance Way, being 14.68 acres located on the south side of Performance Way, 2,525 feet west of Allen Creek Drive from RRR, Restricted Rural Residential District to M1 Manufacturing District and LM Limited Manufacturing District to M2 Manufacturing District. Care of Attorney Brett Rosenthal. The applicant, oh, the applicant is John St. Julian. Again, Care of Attorney Brett Re Rosenthal. The proposed use is manufacturing uses. The City Department's recommendations approval. The Far South Columbus Area Commission's recommendations approval 10 to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1408 2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3367.15 DM2 Manufacturing District Special Provisions and 3367.29B Storage of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 2323 Performance Way to permit reduced development standards for an industrial development in the M2 Manufacturing District. The applicant is John St. Julian, attorney, care of attorney Britt Rosenthal. The proposed use is heavy equipment sales and service facility. 
the City Department's recommendations approval, and the Far South Columbus Air Commission recommendation approval 10 to 0. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1412-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.039, R4 residential district, uh, R4 res area, area district requirements. Wait a minute, I gotta just go back. I got to start with 3332.05, A4 area district lot width requirements, and then 3332 r 4 area district requirements, 3332.19 fronting, 3332.25 maximum side yards required, and 3332.26 C1 minimum side yard permitted, and 3332.27 rear yard of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1047 Hamlet Street to permit a single unit dwelling, a carriage house, on the rear of a lot developed with single unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Eric D. Martineau. Martineau the Proposed use is a carriage house on a lot developed with a senior, sing, single unit dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval, and the Italian Village Commission's recommendation is approval, and it was unanimous. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1378 as 2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses, 3312.25 maneuvering, 3312.27 parking setback line, 3312.49 C minimum numbers of parking spaces required of the Columbus City Codes with property located at 27 and 31 East California Avenue to conform to existing single unit dwellings with reduced maneuvering and parking standards in the C4 commercial, plant, commercial district. The applicant is Marlon, Marlon LLC, care of attorney Jackson Reynolds III. The proposed use is to conform a Two single unit dwellings, the City Department's recommendations approval, the Clintonville Area Commission's recommendations approval, 8 to 01. If there are no questions or comments, I first uh, move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Amend it. And lastly, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. And that's all I have in the zoning this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Tyson. That was pretty, pretty good. That's pretty efficient. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy Tyson, President Hardin. It is adjourned. We're almost done. I knew this was going to be a. <laughs> That's always the way. A motion to reconvene meeting number 29. Please call the roll. <laughs> Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Regular meeting number 29 is back in order. We are in the Economic Development Committee. Council member, the chair is yours. The floor is yours. Thank you once again, Council President Hardin. I have one final ordinance tonight in economic development, and that is ordinance number 1476, 2019, to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with Experience Columbus in support of conference and convention planning activities, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiatives Subfund, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund, and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the Director of Devel the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with Experience Columbus in support of the organization's efforts to market Columbus for sporting events, conferences, and convention planning activities. Columbus is increasingly, increasingly seen as a destination city and host candidate for major national conferences and conventions. These events result in tens of thousands of visitors to Columbus and millions of dollars in direct and indirect spending, supporting a significant number of jobs and businesses in Central Ohio. In 2018, Columbus hosted the NCAA Women's Final Four. In 2019, Columbus will host the biggest conference of them all, the American Society of Association Executives Annual Meeting Exposition. 
which on its own will attract 5,000 attendees, filling 16,800 hotel rooms. Experience Columbus serves as a key partner in marketing, Columbus as a destination city, and in attracting conference and conventions. And this funding will facilitate the organization's efforts. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. And that's all I have tonight in economic development. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The next committee to come before Council is the Health and Human Services Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. The first ordinance I have is 1419-2019 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Health for the, for the tobacco use prevention cessation grant program in the amount of $60,000 to authorize the appropriation of $60,000 to the health department and the health department's grants funding to declare an emergency. The tobacco grant funds are used to reduce exposure to secondhand smoke through policy implementation at multi-unit housing complexes, outdoor spaces, and schools and universities and colleges, camp, college campuses. The grant also focuses on youth tobacco use Initiation, pre initiation prevention. To do this, Columbus Public Health focuses on developing and promoting counter-marketing campaigns, which will be used to increase awareness around the harmful health impact of tobacco use, as well as bring awareness around the targeted marketing strategies of Vic Tobacco. In addition to campaigns, data will be gathered around tobacco, tobacco targeted marketing strategies. This data will be utilized to support tobacco retail density policy and a flavor ban policy. In December of 2016, I sponsored legislation which was passed by council in order to, pro to prohibit tobacco sales inclusive of all products and paraphernalia, including hookah, e-cigarettes, pipes, and rolling papers to anyone under the age of 21. I support all efforts which will continue to help people stop smoking and more importantly, never start. This legislation, this legislation provide additional resources to reduce tobacco use, which will ultimately help residents improve their health. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is Ordinance 1361-2019. And I would like to table this for one week and call for a voice vote. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Dorans? Yes. Favor? Yes. Remy? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes, it's tabled for one week. Thank you. And the last ordinance I have is ordinance number 1361-2019 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with it, <coughs> excuse me, the Human Service Chamber of Franklin County to provide support for their sustainability and expansion efforts to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the neighborhood initiative subfund to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Health Special Revenue Fund and to declare an emergency. <coughs> Excuse me. The Human Services Chamber of Franklin County's mission is to enhance system efficiencies and effectiveness to develop one voice for the human service system by promoting, enhancing, and advocating for human service organizations and the clients they serve. The Chamber's vision is to enhance the quality of life of Franklin County residents through greater advocacy, collaboration, and leadership. I'm sorry. And if there are no other questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll on ordinance 1362. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have on my committee this evening. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Before we adjourn this evening's uh, meeting, I thought it was important to take a moment to uh, remember um, the lives and stand in solidarity with the 12 city workers who perished uh, in senseless gun violence in Virginia Beach, Virginia on Friday. They were 12 folks who went to work, much like folks here, like our 9,000 employees do every day just to serve their residents. Um, and we're not as fortunate as we are to go home that evening. Uh, can we have a moment of silence?
Thank you. I get a motion to adjourn. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin.